This is my first successful image of the Andromeda Galaxy. I took it in January 2022. I didn't know how to properly process data from photos then, but I'm better now. I took this same data and processed it just today and got this image. It took a lot of images to get this far. I processed M31 thousands of times. Here's how to get where I am now. Okay, so shooting the Orion Nebula, pointer right at it. I'm shooting 10 second dark, so I have the uh, cap on, but I gotta take it back off and shoot the S2 shots. There is Orion right there. Shooting with the Esprit ADED, the 1600 mm, now the ASI Air getting ready to change to the S2 filter. And then Rosette it is really clear out tonight. You can see Mars. Let's see if I can get Mars on here. Yeah, that's Mars right there. That's so cool. On December 22nd, 2024, there were three hours of clear night sky. The rest of December has been bad for imaging. Cloudy nights are good for processing images. To process images properly, you must have calibration images. Darks, bias, and flat frames. You take darks at the same exposure as your regular shots, but with the lens covered. Bias shots are extremely fast dark shots, and flats are low even light images. I'm shooting darks right now, shooting bias frames. And then what I usually do for flats is, well, I use just the white screen on my TV. So I don't know if anyone else is into this, but I use a white screen and then I put a t-shirt over for flats. But right now I'm shooting darks and bias frames. I use a blue screen sometimes too, to simulate the sky. And then I shoot that for flat frames. Now, I know some people use a flat panel, and that's like the pro way, but um, from my mixture of different uh, suggestions, I've decided that this is the easiest method for me, and it kind of works. Not bad. It's not bad. I get pretty good flat frames from it, um, but some people might cringe and go, dude, what the heck are you doing? And uh, I, I have to say, like, a lot of the techniques that I use are just kind of haphazard like that, and uh, maybe uh, switching them up might help out a little bit. I don't know. The first step to processing your images is to take a bunch of shots and then stack them in a stacking program. I use Deep Sky Stacker. I open my photos in Deep Sky Stacker. I'm starting with processing an image using my old setup, which includes one color shots from a DSLR. So I open the photos and all of the calibration images. You press check all, then register the images. I like to check for any abnormalities before pressing the OK button. I always seem to have something that just doesn't match up. I use GIMP to process the stacked image. I stretch the colors of the image under adjust color levels. It takes a little time getting used to GIMP. Just follow what I do here by narrowing the waves in the histogram.
Then I use the curve adjustment for each color to get as much balance and detail as I can before the final touches. My technique is very basic. I don't use any special tools or know how to create starless images yet. Okay, it's the day after Christmas. I think it's going to be clear tonight. It's supposed to be clear for a few hours, pretty soon, in fact. It's supposed to be clear around like six o'clock up to 10. And so I'm gonna try to shoot some stuff. I'm gonna try to get Triangulum Galaxy or M110 or, I don't even care if I just get one color tonight. It's been such a tough month to get anything. Well, look at that, it's breaking up. It's looking serious. It's actually breaking up. It was it was sunnier earlier today, and it's going to be dark just in time. I'm so excited. The 22nd of December was the first clear night this month, so it's been really rare to have a, a night to shoot. It's not very clear. i got the scope here. I don't know if you can see the scope. Well, it's not looking good. It's still really cloudy and it's getting cloudier. There was like a little, you could see the sky through the clouds, but it wasn't, you couldn't get anything through them. Nothing decent. And now there's a lot of clouds. And so I'm gonna wait maybe one more hour, just maybe get lucky on something, but I don't think it's happening. Many clear nights I'm out playing music. My first passion often gets in the way of stargazing, almost as much as the clouds do. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch the filter and right now I have a blue filter but we're gonna, we are missing some red filter shots for the Andromeda Galaxy. So I need red, where's my red? We're gonna switch out the blue. We're gonna switch out the blue for the red because I have a limited amount of red shots of the Andromeda Galaxy. So let me go switch that really quick. Here's how you switch that. So I've got this cold blue filter in there. I like to use the drawer because there's less weight on the back of the scope. A lot of people complain about the dovetail of the Esprit ADED being too short for you to actually get a good balance. But I just, put less weight on the back of it. It seems fine. It's so funny reading what the nerds say all the time. I mean, I'm a nerd, but like there's some extreme nerd stuff going on and it's good and it can be hindersome. So um, you gotta choose what's more important to you. That's the main thing. And so there's my red filter and it's ready to go. I take this red filter and I put it inside this little drawer. Put the red filter in the drawer of the camera. Goes right in a little drawer there. Okay, now we're ready to get shots with the red filter of Andromeda. Well, let's get started by clearing our list. I have all of my images stored. I take red, green, and blue filtered shots, as well as UV IR shots. You have to treat each set of filtered images as its own stacked photo but you must also pick your best image as the focal point for all four sets of stacked photos. So then you process each set, one set at a time, the red, the green, the blue, UV, IR, and you must also have taken all calibration images for each set. 
Yes, each filter its own set of darks, biased, and flats, and with the same focus used for each of the filtered shots. Then you process the images in GIMP. Drag each stacked image, red, green, blue, and UVIR. Color code the red, green, and blue images. Convert the image into color mode. Colorize images to its corresponding color. Then set each image to screen. Then adjust each image the same way you would adjust a single color shot. It's important to keep the waves of each color together in the center left portion of the histogram. Then merge the visible images, and then continue to process the image like a single color shot. Next time, I'll show you how I fix a problem with my Newtonian telescope. It involves distortion from the mirror clips and how to fix them. Just because we're not at the edge of space doesn't mean we're not at the edge of time. Or isn't that the same thing? People often think that the center of the universe is wherever you are, relative to the person who's observing it. But it's actually the Big Bang and we're all traveling on its wave together.